Hi, Shannon Waller here, and welcome to the Team Success Podcast. Now, I'm bringing back a rock star, someone I've interviewed before several times, because she has so much wisdom and knowledge and practical experience with a lot of the tools that you use or that you want to be using or you need to be using. So please welcome Emily Morgan. So Emily, thank you so much for joining me again. I am very excited to have you back to talk about a subject that for a lot of people involves a lot of complexity, a lot of headaches, and more importantly, a lot of questions. And I'm excited today because I want to answer those questions about what are the very best tools and technologies for teams to be using so they can maximize their collaboration, their teamwork, most importantly, their results. That's really what we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about Emily's top 10 technology solutions, which I think is great. And if you're not yet familiar with Emily, Emily, you are the founder of Delegate Solutions, which is a really powerful support system, really. So it's strategic administrative support for growth-focused entrepreneurs. So that would be you and your team. And I really love it because you are so focused on results. So before we jump into the technology side, Emily, share a little bit about how your amazing service has grown and what solutions you provide for entrepreneurs. Sure. So we work specifically with entrepreneurs and always have for the last 10 years. And our solution is really comes out of a place of understanding the other solutions that are in the marketplace and how we can provide more value than what's currently available. So we've spent the last 10 years really perfecting the service Our unique approach to support means that as you and your team grow, that you'll never need to find, manage, or train a support resource ever again. So we're meant to be a long-term solution to provide bandwidth for you and your team. Our main focus areas really are on simplifying the back end of your business, helping you streamline tasks, and freeing up your time to focus on results and opportunities that you might be missing out on because you don't have enough time. Right. And given how many people I talk to, but like, well, it's kind of amazing. They will fill certain positions in their business, like the person in charge of finance, the person in charge of sales, the person in charge of marketing. But so few people put their own personal support team in place. I'm always like, do it, do it, do it. (laughs) You'll be Mm -hmm. so much better leveraged. Or they don't actually leverage some of their team as well. And so I'm delighted that you're out there. And what I love is what the high level service that you provide. And what's great is it's a team approach. So you're never left without service. It is designed to be remote. So if you're mobile, which most of you listening are, then the service goes with you. And it's just an amazing, the super, super simple version is someone you can call in to just do a task and, you know, who knows what part of the planet that they're on. Mm -hmm. But your teams are all very, very highly trained. You've got a very rigorous process to make sure that that support system is in place. By the way, Emily is a coach client, so you're very intimately familiar with what Strategic Coach is all about and what the challenges are for growth-oriented entrepreneurs. One of the things that I've always been impressed by you well before this conversation is how savvy you are with the tools for teamwork, which is what I really consider great technology to be. And I love, love, love how Dan Sullivan defines technology as automated teamwork. So when you take technology, which is automated teamwork, and you combine it with people, magical things can happen, and often it doesn't. So Emily, you're going to guide us through the pathway of how to avoid the pitfalls. I know you've got some different category areas that you want to cover today in our conversation. And again, we're going to go through our top 10. So what is the number one tool that you want to suggest or encourage people to get savvy with, to get knowledgeable about, that will really leverage their communication, their teamwork, and their results? What's your number one go-to? Sure. Well, it's interesting because I speak to tons and tons of entrepreneurs and, you know, we talk about the different technologies they use in their business. And, you know, one of my initial questions is what are you using for task and project management? And the answer is usually nothing or paper or sticky notes (laughs) (laughs) or we each have our own system. So usually our first step when we work with clients, if they don't have a tool in place, we work with Asana, which is spelled A-S-A-N-A. It's actually a free tool. So there's a freemium version up to your first 15 users. You can use that for free. So we ran Delegate on that platform for many years without paying for it. When we eventually shifted our client-facing team into using the software, we now spend about $150 a month. I think that's for about 20 to 25 users. 
That's really reasonable. <laughs> yeah. And so what does Asana help you do? And I love, by the way, because Sticky Notes absolutely is the number one project management system. <laughs> Not necessarily the best, and we have the same challenges. Just to give you an example, so we've been upgrading our backstage sales process. So we're talking to prospective clients, and we're talking to existing clients about renewing into the program. And often the managers will say, well, where are your upcoming opportunities? Who are you looking at? It's on my whiteboard. Oh, I have a list of Sticky Notes. Oh, here. Right. <laughs> it's like, can you please put that somewhere where we can track it. Right. And it's a challenge. I mean, I'm all for handwriting, but there's a massive advantage because people get lost and tasks get lost. And so I think it's really important, especially in our mobile world, that we are able to do that. So tell us a little bit about how Asana works. Sure. So you're mentioning about things getting lost. So one of the reasons that we love a, a software like this is it builds in redundancy and it creates accountability. So those are two really important things. So the redundancy piece is someone that works for you is in the middle of a project and their kid gets sick and they have to fly to another country to get treatment or something like that. So if all of their information is on sticky notes or on their desk, no one in the rest of the company knows what in the world's going on. So you can really use Asana to train your team to capture everything that they're working on in this platform. So like on our side, we use it to create redundancy in our work with clients. So our team has to report in each day, what are they working on for clients that day? So that if we ever have to plug somebody in the next day, there's an update. The other point with Asana that's really important is you can create templates. So if you or your team needs to do recurring activities and they happen the same way every single time more than once, we want to capture that in a template and you can actually make that recurring. So for example, if you have an onboarding process where you bring a client in and there's 25 steps, it's always the same. You can create that template and you just click a button and it repeats the template so that your team knows what the steps are. Why that works for delegation is because you can assign it to the person and you can assign the due date. And when you do those things, you're creating accountability in your delegation process. So everyone knows that it's to be done by Friday by Shannon. And Shannon can <laughs> actually comment in the task and talk about what's going on. She can ask for an update, things like that. So it's going to also really cut down on internal communication that's happening through email typically, which we love. <laughs> well, that's what I was just going to say. Most of that happens randomly through email. And this happens, it happened today, actually, <laughs> now that we're thinking about it, <laughs> where checking with one person and then they're not there on a free day. That would be our situation, actually. Yeah. Well, how do I handle it when people are on free days? It's following up. And if it was in... Asana or one of the other complementary tools that's similar is Trello, I'll be adding the bonus technological features, by the way, mm -hmm. or programs, then we could actually all see and it would be all together. So as I'm talking, I realize that's really something we should have done. <laughs> but yeah, so accountability and knowledge across the platform when someone isn't there because they're sick or they're on a free day or they're had to fly to another country, whatever it is, is really, really important. Awesome. So after Asana, what's your next favorite tool and for what? Well, I want to just add a few more points about Asana because sure. I could talk for hours about Asana, so I'll keep it brief. But <laughs> there's a lot of integrations that go into Asana that can really help streamline. So one of my favorite tools for your list here is Wufoo. It's spelled W-U-F-O-O, -O, and it's basically an online form builder. So the way that you could use this is for example, my team, they have to invoice for their time. So they go to our invoicing form, which is a web form. They put in their information and that automatically syncs into Asana as a task. So then the person in charge of paying the team, she has her tasks of who gets paid what and she clicks them off and then we have a record of them. So you can like really brainstorm around ways that you can use those two tools together. Wow. <laughs> Online form builder. And I think about... And we have a graphics team, and I think we use them <laughs> probably too much right. for this sort of thing. But that's really powerful because I'm all about package information. I'm trained by Dan, who was a trained graphic mm -hmm. artist. Mm -hmm. And I can't stand when things are ugly. If there's an online form builder where people can put in their information, it looks decent. It's also consistent because there's nothing worse than one person setting in their hours, for example, one way and someone else saying it another way. And you have to jumble that for the person who's actually having to process it. It's horrible. Right. So something that standardizes the input, I think is really, really useful. Oh, I like that. Wufoo. W-U-F-O-O. -O. Okay. I got to go play with that one. It creates it as a task, which really is ultimately what the job is. It's a task to pay someone. So that's mm -hmm. why we love that. <laughs> those two together. 
I love that. Okay, great. Sure. What else is super fun? So my favorite technology is Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R. Basically what this tool does is it makes two tools talk to each other. And it says, okay, if I label a contact in my Gmail, enter it into my CRM, and it will make Gmail talk to your CRM. It will make Asana talk to Slack. It will make all these different technologies talk together. So that's around $20 a month, and that gets you a whole bunch of what they call zaps, which is basically how many times it will zap from one thing to the next. Good. And to say the name again and how you spell it? Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R. Zapier. Oh, got it. Okay. <laughs> Goodness. Well, I love it because actually it, it's literally teamwork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's making sure people talk to each other, which is sometimes challenging in the real world. So I love that. Okay. So that was number three. What's your next one? What else do you have on your list? Well, if it's okay, I'll give you just a few examples of Zapier and how it would work. Yeah. We will use it, for example, to take our applications. So someone applies on a Google form and that zaps into Asana. And then we manage the whole hiring process of who's talking to this person and when through Asana. Let's say someone signs up in your WooFoo form online, you can zap into MailChimp so that they become a contact. So really this is all about saving time, building automations, and it's incredibly reliable and it's very affordable. Mm, I love it. I don't know about anyone else listening right now, but I'm getting a sense of just how elegant the system is. I'm just trying to think of how many people it would take to do all the functions that you've talked about if there was no technology. It'd be a lot, a lot. Wasted time. (laughs) It's not that it's not sophisticated work. There's elements that you don't want to miss, but it's not creative work. Right. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of amazing. All the systems you're listing used to be things that people actually did. Exactly. You know, for a living. (laughs) And now they're automated and they're really inexpensive. They can provide a ton of value so that people can be freed up to do the more things that are less predictable, like human beings, and take on those more creative tasks. So this is inspiring. I like it. (laughs) You've already teased us with a few of your other favorite. (laughs) So after Zapier, what's another one? So we look at communication tools next. So how can you communicate more easily across your team? Again, always the goal with get out of email. You shouldn't be communicating back and forth internally with email. So the two tools that we run the business on and highly recommend Slack, Mm S-L-A-C-K. It's an online instant message platform. And by the way, Asana And Slack, they're both mobile apps too, so you can put them on your smartphone. Great. Slack allows us to create multiple channels. So let's say you have a team that's working on, you know, a sales team, or you have a team that's working on a new project. You can create just teams within the Slack account, or you can create all your employees are on a channel, all your subcontractors are on a channel, and you can message everyone at the same time. So we've been using Slack probably about two years now, and I just can't imagine how we ever function without Slack, so. Well, it's interesting. All of our coaches could be a Slack group mm-hmm. and all that kind of thing. So that's interesting. And most of this I don't use, everybody, mm-hmm. because I'm not, well, most of the time I spend talking to other people. <laughs> but people rave, rave, rave about Slack and the freedom from email. I mean, email, I think, although it's fabulous in some ways, is such, this is a bit of a crude term, but such a time suck yes. for most of us. And here's the challenge with email is that it's not all the same. Right. So it comes in the same format, but some of it represents hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and other represents a waste of your time. Right. And the problem is it all looks the same until you scan the subject line or you open the darn thing. Yes. So when you can take stuff offline, you know immediately that it's relevant, it's practical, it's fast, and it really frees up your inbox, which there's just the tyranny of everyone's inbox that I hear about <laughs> all the time. And strategies to get people off that and much more project and results focused leverage us so much. So that would be a top one to go jump onto. Anything else about Slack that you just adore? Well, it's free. Uh (laughs) (laughs) I love that. The archives of history for a long time, it's free. So we set all our clients up on it now because it's a great way, again, to capture what is being said across the team. So if we ever need to jump in, there's a record there. And again, reducing email and sort of instant communication, replacing text and things like that. Now, quick question. Do you use this with clients? And if so, does it go into your CRM? No, it's its own app. But yes, we use it with clients. Each client will get their own Slack account and our team will be added onto it. 
Okay, got it. So it becomes a type of a CRM too. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And Zoom. <laughs> oh, good, which we're actually yeah. talking on right now. Yeah. So Zoom technologies, and this is something we use extensively at Coach. So I'm a huge fan, but I want to hear from you as to why you are too. Well, again, this is an inexpensive platform. So we're spending, I think I spend $10 a month for my Zoom account. You can actually use Zoom for free, but the meetings are stopped at about 40 minutes. So you have to you know, make sure you have quick meetings if you're going with the free version. There's also a, a Zoom webinar feature. If you like webinars, if you like to put on webinars, you can use the paid webinar feature. It's around $50 to use that. Great. So if you're not familiar with Zoom, Zoom is an incredibly high definition web way of communicating. So right now, even though you're hearing our voices, we're looking at each other, which is mm -hmm. great in an interview because then you actually get cued to body language, who's got something to say, as opposed to talking over each other, which is not fun for anyone listening, sure. that's for sure. So Zoom is amazing. And the first time I was on it, a client had invited me to a meeting and it was you know, zoom.us, I think, is normally the address that I see. It's actually included in our what's called Ring Central phone system. Mm -hmm. It's like powered by Zoom is what I'm looking at right now. So sometimes it's built into certain communication systems. So that's our phone thing. But all of a sudden I looked at it, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm watching the best quality movie ever. And then I looked at myself and went, oh, lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh dear, I got very self-conscious very quickly. You will show up in high definition, so look your best. <laughs> Emily, you look gorgeous. But it's fantastic. You know, Skype was great, but it's not that stable. I've had so many dropped mm -hmm. situations. Everyone needs a good, strong internet connection. But I don't know, it's also less intuitive. Skype's less intuitive. So I find Zoom HD very, very, very powerful, and it's a game changer. It's just such a higher level of web communication. And we use the webinar feature as well, and I just used it yesterday. Yesterday. And easy and not hard. You invite people like you would invite them to a meeting. They click on a link and then they're in. Exactly. So it's a game changer in just terms of how much it takes up the level of connection where you can see people and read their faces and their body language. And because it's so much clearer, yep. it's just fantastic. So yes. All right. And you can record mm -hmm. it, your meetings and you can share your screen. So we're always looking at the same thing. So literally my team is all around the country. Most of us have never met in person. <laughs> We see each other nearly every day on Zoom. So. Yeah, so you actually have that personal relationship. Mm -hmm. And then also you can save the recording and save the MP3. So you actually can save the audio file, which we often will send out for transcription. And so sure. you have lots of ways of sharing the data and sharing your conversation and your communication with people, which is really important. And it's not complicated. If I can do it, anyone can. So there aren't that many steps is really what that means. Because <laughs> I don't do well with 18 million steps of things to do. So if Zoom is not on your hot list of things to check out, please add it. All right, great. Anything else about Zoom or what's the next one? In the communication vein, this is a really neat one that we use a lot. It's a marketing, what I would call a marketing hack. If you're a Gmail user, there is a way that you can send custom mass email mail merges through Gmail. So for example, rather than sending it out through MailChimp or your email marketing provider, you can actually upload lists of, I forget the number, it's somewhere between a couple hundred up to a thousand email addresses into your Gmail account. And it'll send like, dear Shannon, dear Emily, like it will customize it. So it looks like a real you know, a regular email that you hand sent to someone. Wow. That one, I'm going to have to give you the link on because it's not like a tool. It's actually a website that someone created this hack. So I'll have to email you that link. All right, good. So we'll post that in the notes so that you can get that. But that's fantastic. I love that. What's another one? What's something else that's really useful for you and your team? So scheduling is always a big one. <laughs> always the first thing to go. We're actually believers that humans should not be scheduling as much as possible. So any way that we can segment off your scheduling to an automated platform, we would push for just because it's not a good use of anyone's time <laughs> to have to manage scheduling. So the way that I advise clients is really to think about scheduling as components. So you're not necessarily offloading all of your scheduling, but maybe you're offloading your internal scheduling to this type of software. But there's two of them that I'll recommend. One is called Acuity, A-C-U-I-T-Y. And the other is called Calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y. Both of those accomplish the same results. So people can, you give people a link to your calendar, they go in and they pick a time that works for them. They have different features like 
Will it confirm the meeting? What does the presentation look like? You know, how does the branding work? So you could look at both and compare which one works for you, but they're both really affordable, like around $10 a month. Wow. Could you also include, for example, the Zoom link for the meeting if you wanted to? I'm sure. Yeah. You can customize everything. (laughs) Right. I think where I see people get hung up is they're like, I don't want to give my scheduling to a robot or to computer, but really if you can think about it in different blocks, it becomes a lot more easy to just offload just a piece of your scheduling. Well, and I want to stress that we actually end up doing a customized version, but totally in in the vein of offloading part of your schedule. What's interesting is it makes you be a lot more intentional about your time. Mm. And when do I want to have my internal meetings? And you have to decide that in advance. And then you leave it open in your calendar. So for example, if you want to have client meetings or conversations on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you could put in, that's how ours works, you could put in availability and then people can choose based on that. Yes. And it's actually great because for them, this happens with us a lot. So I'll want to schedule, you know, a conversation with somebody and they'll say, okay, here's my calendar. Pick the time that works best for you. We find an overlap and it eliminates again, that email exchange, mm-hmm. which I find excruciating <laughs> painful. <laughs> so I have a live person doing that. My calendar is pretty complicated, but it's one of those things where it's actually really, really powerful. And for those of you that want to implement the time system this way, brilliant way to do that. Sure. If you want to have X number of appointments, you can say when you want that to happen, when your availability is, and then it gets filled up. <laughs> well, how cool is that? Now, you obviously want to keep that personal touch with key relationships as well, but that can be a great way to do it. Or your internal meetings. It's interesting because I work with, as you do, team members a ton, and they're frustrated sometimes because they don't know when it's okay or cool to talk to their team leader, the owner, the I want to say the mm-hmm. boss, but the entrepreneur. And if there was a team time set aside that they could choose the 15, 30-hour minute slot to 60-minute slot that they want – oh my gosh, that would do so much for team morale right there. Just doing that. We actually, because I'll use it right now, I use it just for my internal team. So in my Slack profile, there's actually a link right to my Acuity scheduler. So like they know they need to talk to me, they can just click on that link and pick a time. So it's very empowering for team members to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. It also gives them some freedom in terms of deciding, and it's not complicated. I always look at what are the impediments in the way of good communication teamwork and sometimes people are shy (laughs) they don't want to talk to each other but if they can go look online and find a 15 30 minute slot to talk to emily that will be really encouraging for them so i think it's very very wise and again we'll have you be more intentional about your time so if we talk about self-managing company which starts with freedom of time these tools can help you do that it also can protect your free days everybody (laughs) and remember Progress, not perfection. Like that's exactly. baby stuff. <laughs> yeah. So start with one particular, like could be buffer time, could be free time, could be focus time, and then put that in and then work your way up. And I do think there is, depending on your complexity of your life, that frees up your really talented people who are good at organizing time to do the sophisticated stuff. Yeah. You know, the basic stuff, the repetitive things, free people up from that. Awesome. Okay. So we have Acuity and we have Calendly, which I think operates very similarly. And I'm going to throw you a curveball one that is artificial intelligence. So we went to test this on my calendar, but unfortunately I use iCal, so this did not work for me. But if you're using Google Calendar, you can actually try out x.ai. So the letter x.ai. And basically this is artificial intelligence managing your calendar for you. (laughs) So... Wow. Okay. Talk about, this is intriguing. This is the new next generation here. Well, it's kind of just learning your preferences and you can set it up, but it responds just like Nicole would on your behalf. And it goes back and forth to find the right time. So again, you're leveraging time. You're using automation. Again, I want to try it, but I'm on iCal. So it wasn't set up yet to do that. I know. Math programs are sometimes (laughs) the last ones to get that. And I heard about x.ai when I was at Abundance 360. So it's come up now a couple of years and there's some raving, raving fans about that. So that's that's a fun one to go play with. I love that curveball. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think that was actually number nine. Okay. We're chunking cool. through these. So what's another key one that for you is just, I could call it a game changer for you, but just something that you rely on the same way that you would have a person 20 sure. years ago. What's one of your other key tools? Well, I think email is such a problem for everyone to try and manage email and to try and have a system that works. And so a lot of clients actually delegate management of their inbox to us in some cases, and we're always trying to streamline that. But 
One great tool that you can use for your inbox, another free one if you're using Gmail, is called Boomerang. Yes, I've heard of that. Basically, you install it in your box and it allows you to, if you get home from a trip and you want to draft all these emails up late at night, but you don't want to send them to your clients. When this is installed, you can hit send later. It lets you set the time so that the emails go out at a normal time. (laughs) So they don't know that you're missing sleep. Okay, good. Well, you don't want to come across as, at least I never want to come across as working late at night. So (laughs) it also has a feature that reminds you to follow up. So when you see an email come through that you know, you send the response and you want to make sure you remember to contact that person later, you can set a trigger within Boomerang to do that. And then it lets you pause when you can do your inbox. So it actually has a feature that like, it's called inbox pause, and it will turn off um, your email so that you can focus. Oh my goodness. Really? Yeah. Okay. Please everyone go and get this now. (laughs) You need this. If you have the notifications turned on, on your email, Turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst thing in the world for interrupted attention span. And most of us are ADD or pseudo ADD anyway. And squirrel, you know, something gets our attention. So that's really powerful. And then you, again, you can be intentional about when are you going to spend the 30, 60 minutes on your email. Yep. Oh, I love that. I did not know that feature was part of Boomerang. That's something yeah. I learned today. Great. They added some sort of artificial intelligence into Boomerang that helps you construct better emails in terms of your phrasing. (laughs) So if you're someone that's not a good writer or you make a lot of spelling errors, like that's now part of the Boomerang features as well. I love it. (laughs) Oh my God. Can I mention a bonus one then (laughs) that's similar? I got an offer one day. It popped up and email advertising, it happens. Something called Grammarly. Yes. Yeah. So Grammarly is Grammar L-Y. And it's fantastic. And I'm so glad certain people, including my husband, (laughs) has it on his because it spell checks and grammar checks everything that you write. I learned a lot more about where commas belong and where they don't belong (laughs) with Grammarly. And then it'll send you a weekly summary. So it checks everything and make sure you also have the spell check turned on on your email that has prevented a number of typos from going out to clients, for which we're grateful. But Grammarly is really interesting because at the end of the week, it will tell you how many words you use relative to other people. Wow. Apparently, I'm in the 90th percentile of that, which doesn't totally (laughs) surprise me. And it shares comments about your vocabulary, also tells you if you type too fast and do typos, which is also me. So it's kind of fun. It's actually nice that it aggregates that information. And there's a totally free version, which is all I've ever used. And it is fantastic. So it saves your butt. <laughs> but I actually think that if Boomerang helps you construct better emails, yeah, amen. I it. love that. That's a brilliant, brilliant feature. Now, there's one other one that you've mentioned. We're into bonus territory here. You've mentioned MailChimp. Mm-hmm. Can you just talk about that a smidge? Because I think You use it really, really well. And I think some other people would like to learn more about that. We actually use HubSpot at this point. But when I started Delegate, we used MailChimp. And we used it because it's free and it's simple and easy to use. But it's basically an email marketing platform. And they have lots of different features. And you can increase to different paid versions to create different things that you need to do. So if you want to create email marketing funnels, things like that, like autoresponders, if someone downloads your content that three days, seven days, 10 days, they get this type of content from you. And it allows you to create different lists. So if you want to just email people that are in strategic coach or people that are in Philadelphia, you can create customized lists in that platform. And it's typically free. Now you said you moved to HubSpot. So what was the advantage of HubSpot and why are you now with that one? Well, we moved to HubSpot for content marketing. So it's pretty much, in my opinion, the most robust content marketing platform out there. So it allows us to create content campaigns where people can download information and then they go into those very robust funnels. And then we just moved over into their CRM. So now everything is in one place. <laughs> we can see we can see if you open our emails. It's very creepy. <laughs> you can stalk people without even trying. It's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> I love it. It's good because we're like, all right, has this person looked at anything we've sent? No. Okay. (laughs) Clearly they're not interested. Yeah. Basically, privacy is dead if anyone's really wondering about that. If you think (laughs) that people do not know what you're doing, you're wrong if it's online. So everyone just needs to accept that in some way, shape, or form. But yes, and knowing who to target then, who did open it, who is interested, and then you can follow up appropriately, I think is really key. 
All right, so a couple more key questions to ask you about how to think about technology. But before we do that, I want to go through the list. So you've talked about Asana. I also mentioned Trello, mm-hmm. so that's kind of a bonus one. Wufu, which is online form builder that connects with Asana, which is super cool. Mm-hmm. Zapier, which is a great way to, or tools, pardon me, to talk to each other. You've got Slack, fabulous task-focused instant messaging between people that takes you out of email. Yes. (laughs) Zoom or Zoom HD, brilliant online, basically video platform, allows you to do webinars, a really great success there. You've talked about the marketing hack within Gmail that allows you to customize, and we'll include the link to that in the show notes. Number seven that you mentioned seven and eight were Acuity and Calendly (laughs) to automate at least part of your scheduling. It could be internal, it could be your focus days that really help. It gives you a link to your calendar that people can then choose themselves and eliminates a lot of those back and forth emails that we talked about. I love how you talked about jumping in possibly to artificial intelligence for your calendar, which is x.ai, which works brilliantly with Google Calendar, not with iCal, unfortunately. (laughs) And then Boomerang, which is fabulous for Gmail and helps you write better. Oh, my goodness. Reminds you to follow up. There's an inbox pause so you do not get distracted. You can actually focus on (laughs) producing that proposal and that or that, you know, contract that will make you so much money. And then I also mentioned Grammarly, which is a great way to kind of improve your writing from a spelling, punctuation, and grammar thing, which I think is really important. And then you've also mentioned MailChimp and HubSpot. Oh my gosh, this is a wealth of knowledge and capabilities. (laughs) Now, I don't want anyone to get overwhelmed to go in the gap. Even if you pick one or two that you're like, ooh, I want to try that. I want to try Boomerang, you know, (laughs) or Zoom or Slack, you know, some of the ones that just really make sense. What I love about all of these is that they are simple and they're very inexpensive. They've got freemium version, but then they've the pay for version. They actually allow you additional privacy features sometimes, additional mobility features. So there's it's often very well worth upgrading for if you, if you compare this to what it used to cost you to hire someone, <laughs> it's dirt cheap, right. which is really cool. Now, the other thing about you, Emily, is I know that you're always looking for the newest, looking for the better, looking for like you've talked about how you've changed and evolved a little bit. So I want to talk about how you think about your thinking a little bit. So what are you looking for? What are your success criteria for great technology that's going to leverage your team? What are some of the things that you're sorting process in your mind when something new comes across your desk? Or I should say across your computer, (laughs) because that's what would happen. (laughs) My virtual office. (laughs) Yes. Well, you bring up a good point because really, like, yes, these are great tools, but always your focus needs to be on the process, like not so much on the technology, the technology supports the process. So Mm -hmm. when I first tried to roll out Asana, Joe, who's been with me for a number of years, who's our ops manager, he's now an Asana power user, was incredibly resistant to Asana. And I think teams can get really overwhelmed around new technology. So you want to be very, very selective and even maybe beta test it with some key power users before you try to roll out a tech solution to your whole team. Mm -hmm. Something like Slack is really easy for the team to get used to using. And if you kind of like maybe just have a day where it's like a forced day, if we're going to communicate, only doing it on Slack, like just to try and get used to it and see the value. So just be really thoughtful around deploying it with your teams because they can get frustrated with new technology Mm -hmm. changes all the time. Well, it's true. And I think it can become overwhelming and people do have their go-tos. And now talk a little bit, we talked about this at the beginning of getting off paper. How much of a transition is it for some people rather than others? You know, we could have a whole millennial conversation, but (laughs) I actually don't think it's really all that relevant because I know some people who are older who are just tech wizards. And I know some people who are younger who are very resistant to new things. So what's your take on the mindset or what's needed from your team's point of view in order to adopt new technology? We're a virtual office. So for me, paper was never an issue because my team's all around the country (laughs) and our clients are all around the country in Canada. So we've not had to face that battle, but I do completely acknowledge that that is a real problem for people to make the shift to technology. So again, I encourage just what is an easy next step that you can take to try and move forward? Because Some businesses will require paper like on an ongoing basis, but for the types of things that I mentioned, like tasks and projects and communication, like those things don't need to really be on paper anymore. Those things can happen in technology tools. Mm -hmm. You have to think about your business from a compartmentalized standpoint. What can we move over to improve technology? 
Fantastic. And I think one of the most key points you've made is that the focus is on the process, not on the technology. Yes. <laughs> it's really about what do you need for your business and then what is the best solution for it, not to make our companies technological wonders. That is totally not the point. Right. You want to be able to do what you do and what you love to do the most, easy, reasonably priced systems, ones that really speed things up, that get you results as we talk about faster, easier, cheaper, better. That's got to be at least part of the success criteria. And if it's not, it's not for you. Right. And you don't need to adopt the newest, hottest thing that comes around. What I like about the ones you've talked about, a lot of them have been around for a long time now. You know, well, two years is a long time <laughs> in program world. Right. Right. But it's two years on a system, that's robust. Yeah. You know, you can do that. And a lot of them, I'm, Asana's been around for a while. I know that you trained one of my good friends and clients and his team on Asana. That was a particular yes. engagement that you had with them to get them all up to speed and knowing that. We have little sort of mini one-on-one -on -one training sessions on Trello that's very similar. And that apparently Asana and Trello now look alike, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> what I love it. And sometimes having someone coach you through it and really walk you through. I'm notorious for using the top three features of a tool and not going much deeper. <laughs> mm -hmm. I could maybe blame that on my three in Fact Finder and Colby. Mm -hmm. But it, it's interesting because sometimes there's nuances and ways that you can use things in a more sophisticated fashion. But it's great to have an expert, someone like you, who can coach you through that to make sure that you're maximizing the use of it. So I think if any of these, if you tried them and they haven't worked, there probably is another cut or another take you could invest in to make sure that you do maximize the value. Because one of the things I really trust about you, Emily, is you're not a crazy quick start, short fact finder follow through. You have <laughs> lots of fact finder and follow through to rub together. And so you are particular and you are detail focused and you do pay attention to systems. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate your very complimentary talents in weighing what works, what's best, what's efficient. And I know you've tested a lot of things. As I like to say, you've kissed a few frogs <laughs> in your technological oh, yeah. journey. <laughs> oh, no, don't like that tool. Don't like that technology. That doesn't work. <laughs> so I love that you've shared this list. So let's look through it one more time just to make sure because I know that if you've gotten interrupted that you're going to want the list. So Asana or Trello, Wufu, W-U-F-O-O, -O, Zapier, Slack, Zoom. Next was the marketing tool within Gmail, which we'll send you a list for, for customized email mass mailings. Number seven is Acuity as a calendar scheduling or Calendly is number eight. Nine is x.ai for Google Calendar. And then number 10, Boomerang. And then we also talked about Grammarly, MailChimp, and HubSpot. <laughs> I don't know. Your, everyone's brain's probably full. <laughs> well, this is fantastic. Is there anything else or anything else that comes to mind, Emily, before we wrap up in terms of either technology and teamwork or how to think about it? Yeah, I would caution you with Asana because that's really a foundational tool in your business. You want to make sure it's set up properly. The most important thing is make sure you use a domain email address to set that up. So don't use at gmail.com. Use at delegate solutions or at strategiccoach.com because that's going to give you a lot more functionality and flexibility as you expand on that platform. Mm -hmm. And definitely it's worth consulting an expert around how to use Asana to run your business. So how to construct it before you start trying to roll it out to your team because it can get confusing <laughs> and it's worth some time to have a conversation about how to configure it correctly. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. So I wanted people also to be able to connect with you either about that or about anything else or just what do you do more that helps your whole thing about never having to hire or manage that kind of support again was incredibly appealing <laughs> when you said at the beginning. So how can people reach you find out about you? You also have an amazing blog where you share so much wisdom. So please give people how they can kind of tap into you, Emily. Sure. So our website is delegatesolutions.com just like the word delegation. So delegate. And you can email me directly, emily at delegatesolutions.com. Perfect. Great. So go check out the website, sign in for your blog because it's so good. Mm -hmm. And I hope that all of this information has been really useful. And you've got at least two or three key takeaways. And I don't know about everybody else, but things come across my field of vision. It comes up in a conversation in a workshop. And I'm sure that's happened in your workshops too, Emily. And they're like, oh, that sounds interesting. And I write it down in my workshop notes booklet. And sometimes it makes it back to my office when I have a moment. It's like, oh, what was that again? <laughs> I really appreciate the focused conversation from you who's tried it, who's tested it, who used it with your clients and with your team to run your own business. And I just really appreciate you sharing all of this wisdom and experience with us. It means a lot. I know it will really leverage people to their next level of 
collaboration and teamwork and success. Awesome. I'm very, very grateful. So thanks a million. I'm sure we'll talk again. This is our third, so I'm sure there'll be a fourth sometime in the future. <laughs> if anyone has any questions or comments, please let us know at questionsatstrategiccoach.com. And as always, from both Emily and me, here's to your team success. Hi, Shannon here, and thank you very much for listening. If you like what you heard today, please take a moment to rate the Team Success Podcast on iTunes, and we'd love it if you'd share the podcast with anyone else who could benefit. If you're interested in learning more about the Strategic Coach Program for Entrepreneurs, visit us at strategiccoach.com or the Strategic Coach channel on YouTube. For free downloads and more team success strategies, visit teamsuccesshandbook.com. Mm-hmm.